So, like, I, I, I'm going to watch this weekend. Yeah. I did not fill out a bracket. Okay. Um, is that I, rare for you? It is rare. Tomorrow. Oh, it's, it's tomorrow. tomorrow. Okay. Wow. So yeah. they changed it. Okay. So I, no I still might do it. Okay. Yeah, that's right. It's a football podcast, but we talk sports. We talk b-ball. All right. And I wish I didn't do my bracket because <laughs> I did it. And it looks real shitty. Hello, this is Chris Sims on Button, and this is Paul Burmeister. Hey. What's up, man? How you doing? Uh, yeah. So Bracket. You made me realize yeah. that yes. it wasn't that night, right? right? So I did do it the very next morning. Yes. Dan Patrick show was they were blowing me up. Oh, you got oh, you got an hour to send it in. Hurry up. Blah, How blah, bad blah. is it? I, I like. It's horrible. I think I had Virginia in the Final Four. I think I also had Vin- uh, Illinois in the Final Did Four. Did you have my Hawkeyes there? Uh, I had your Hawkeyes making a, like a maybe a Sweet 16, I think yeah. a Final Eight. Yeah. Right? I mean, Big Ten basketball. Oh holy my gosh. crap balls, Batman. Yeah. yeah. I know. I mean, I'd like to, that'd be a job I'd like to have. How, can I see the NCAA tournament? I could have seen it just as well as they did. I mean, <laughs> do they feel good after that weekend going? Wait, all the teams we thought that were one, two, and three seeds got beat by a bunch of, you know, seven, eight, and twelve seeds and things like right. that. Yeah. That's why it's that's why it's impossible. My youngest son threw right. something at me. He said, Did you know that you have a better chance? Pick every beach in the world of, of locating one pebble. Like you're gonna pick one pebble that you selected before. Better chance of doing that than having a perfect bracket. In, in the NCAA tournament. I, I would imagine so. And this, hey, I, I ended up watching a lot this weekend. I didn't expect to. I did. You know, just live sports. I didn't see any of it. The finality of it, you yeah. know, the desperation. I did go, okay, this is like this is better than I was expecting, even though there's no even fans though, yeah. and bands and all right. of that. It was cool. My Texas team is done. I mean, we suck at sports at Texas. I don't know what <laughs> else to say. Maybe it's karma for our messed up school fight song, which also bothers me. Just going to throw that we out there. We have that in common. But both of our schools went down in the tournament. Yeah. And we're both wearing navy today. Both I mean, wearing navy. Some similarities right. running through here. Right. But you don't have a fight song that's got some weird uh, racial undertones, do you? No. No, 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 you don't. No, but we do. We do. And I don't like that aspect of my school right now. I'm not happy with them from that angle or our sports. I mean, football, basketball, I mean, we're just we're irrelevant. So mm. that's that. But we got a good one today. Yes. We're to talk about football. Yep. I've been watching a ton of football. Um, you have to. I mean, safeties and woo. quarters. I was thinking about what a massive yeah. challenge it is to right. rate this group. Yeah. And I, I love comparisons. Yeah. So let's say the NFL season, full swing. Right. You have like 14 games to get ready for if we're here on a Monday. Yeah. Compare that workload and that prep to watching all the safeties and corners. Yeah. Um, this is probably more of an intense work, right? And, and, and it's a weird year this year, too. You know, again, I'm not like I call my friends in the NFL and go, give me your rankings or give me your top. I don't do that. I don't do any of that. I release my rankings and then I tell my friends after, and most of my friends are like that anyways. They want to see my rankings first before we have a discussion about mm-hmm. it, right? So, um, but this year's weird in the fact of I like to have a list of guys, right? Just a reference point, not to say that I'm going to agree with how they're listed or anything like that. But the, the lists are all over the place this year. Aren't they? They're all over the place. And that has made it even worse for me because now I don't trust it. So mm-hmm. I'm like, uh, let me watch five more guys. Yeah. Let me watch... 10 more guys because I've seen guys that are I'm go this guy's not in the top 20 he's top three like there's no question you know I saw like I told you before we started Deami Brown from North Carolina I looked at one list he wasn't on the first page of wide receivers it seems impossible yeah it, it is impossible because I could tell you since I released that rankings yeah. I've had a lot of teams already feed back to me and go yeah. hey he's pretty damn good you're yeah. right we're he's a first rounder so that that but so I, I that's where it got stressed out so it just is a never-ending thing right now to where I'm going, you know, whoa, okay, I got, let me watch a few more. Oh, the, man, this guy was 17th on here. He's damn good. I don't know. What's 25 look like? And it's just gone. Never-ending rabbit hole. Never-ending. Yeah, yeah. And I got more notebooks and crap here, and I'm all over the place. But I'm excited about it. And it's a good group as far as I like the, the safeties a lot. There's a lot of good safeties in this That's draft. That's good. Corners, I think the top-end group is pretty damn good. Um, I'm not blown away by the top end group, but but it it, it I think there's a drop off after the top end group okay. significantly. Where the safeties, I went down the line and went, 
I mean, man, this guy's my number eight or nine safety, but I mean, if I talked to a coach and he told me he was number five safety for them, I wouldn't go, oh, you're just so stupid. That's crazy. Right. It's, a, it's a good group of safeties. Before we get into the corners yeah. first, as you kind of alluded to, a lot of reaction to what you did with the wide receivers sure. and how you had them ranked. I want to hit a couple of questions yeah, there. Yeah, cool, cool. Uh, so for your 2021 draft rankings, let's begin with the real Josh Kang. Rashad Bateman isn't a great athlete. 6'2", 210, ran a 4'39", sounds all right to me. Yeah. Route running on par with Devontae Smith, I don't, I don't know about that. I respect Sims a lot, but I really disagree here. Where'd you have him ranked? Well, I, I like him. He's be one, somewhere in that 7 to 10 range. There's just not enough pure physical ability there. I mean, hey, I, that's a good question. and I, There's a lot of things I like about this guy. Mm -hmm. But, you know, again, go back and tell me how much impressive yak you see or just straight beating a guy over the top with pure speed. You know, again, he's going to have a really good role in the NFL and everything like that. His tape does not show 4.39 speed. And here's another thing we're going to dispel here throughout this process. 4.39 speed at your pro day ain't 4.39 speed at the combine. <laughs> There's a difference there. Mm -hmm. In fact, you can add a tenth, maybe a tenth, or, you know, 0.15 to that. Mm. You know, that's the general rule. And that's why a lot of guys you see every year don't run at the combine because, oh, I'm a little worried about what my number might be here. Let me go to my environment now where there's human error because someone's hitting it instead of a laser at the end. So if you see 439, that's 449. There's no doubt that's 449. Every coach in football is going to go, that's a tenth below that. So uh, again, he's a real good player. I'm not trying to knock him. He's going to have a legit role in the NFL. He's got a little inside outside value, but he's more of an inside big slot type guy. And yeah, I just don't think it's a. He's a pure elite specimen as I'm talking about some of these other guys. Staying in the Big Ten, it's yeah. nice that you mentioned how pro day 40 times are a little bit skewed. Sure. Rondale Moore yesterday, yeah. Bump Jazz says, does Rondale Moore's, Rondale Moore's 40 time change things unofficially 4.29? I mean, it makes me feel good because I want Ron, Rondale Moore, the guy I saw my the freshman year, is a yeah. special, special player. I mean, that guy is a first-round pick. The problem is the last two years of film don't show that guy because of the injuries and everything he's had to deal with there. Where'd you have him? So, I mean, as far as listing them, it, it was a hard list. I don't, yeah. I'd nowhere in the top seven or eight or nine at that point, no. You know, this is one where, yeah, you'd have to go through it and put him some, through some vigorous, you know, workouts and see where he is physically. He does have first-round talent. You know, even though he ran great and if he continues to have workouts that are great, I, I still think after two years of being injured and being a smaller guy, there's no way he climbs back into the first round. But he could be that guy where, you know, next year we sit here and go, you know, he was picked in the third round and look, he's healthy mm -hmm. and he's a superstar or a weapon in the NFL right now. I, I don't deny that any way, but all I can do is go by the film. Listen, if I had personal workouts and got to know the guy, maybe I'd feel differently about it. But just the film the last two years is, is a little too underwhelming. All right, Prospect Rundown presented by Applebee's for whoop, the whoop. 2021 Draft Corner Rankings. What up, Applebee's? Yeah, look at you. Yeah, you know, you know, I don't know if you've heard, but I'm kind of a big deal I around guess. here. <laughs> I guess so. No, I'm not. But Let's begin actually by taking a peek at last year's okay. at top five corners. Yeah. And we're always learning. We're Ooh. always thinking about ways okay. and what we did last time. How yeah. can it help us for this time? Uh, you had you were a little bit more down on Jeff Okuda than some others. You yeah. liked A.J. Terrell more than some others. What's something from last year's evaluation of corners that you applied to this year's kind of as a note to thyself about how to be well, even better at it? I, I think, first off, I like my rankings right there. That's, I'm not going to lie. Yep. I, I mean, C.J. Henderson and A.J. Terrell had better years than Jeffrey Akuda. That, that's not even close. I'm, I'm just sorry. Akuda's year was very underwhelming for all the reasons I said coming out in the draft. You know, there was a lot of good top five pick. No. It was, you know, it, it, the technique and all that was perfect. But the one thing I'll always take away from corners and mm -hmm. just a reminder of this year, again, I, I want to see pure, raw ability. That's what corner is about. It's pure, raw ability. Yeah, I know interceptions are cool, and he's got tackles, and, whoa, he can play zone coverage. That's great. But when times get tough in the NFL and you need a, you know, big stops or your defensive players to be special, you need a guy that you can go, wait, you, 
you, you cover that guy who runs 4-3 mm -hmm. wherever he goes, right. and we'll, we'll work on all the other stuff. We can work on zone coverage and tackling and things like that. So uh, that's what I always keep in mind with, with this, just going, going into it. Don't get enamored with, you know, again, the headlines, the chatter, and I want to see this is a position specifically, I mean, really, really specifically, where I, I got to see raw explosiveness, mm -hmm. I, you know, and, and not to get too carried away sometimes with technique. And this is another one, too, because I got a guy on this list who's got some underwhelming film at times to where I go, wait, what he does and what they ask him to do in this defense, we could bring back Darrell Revis, and there's going to be some struggles here. This is hmm. not fair to do to the guy. And you got to keep that in mind, too, just like when a quarterback has nobody open. You can't right. blame the quarterback. You know, same thing here with the DBs. So, sorry Ed, for that long answer, but hopefully that answered it. I asked people to send me some questions yesterday, yeah. knowing we were going to talk about corners right. and safety. I, good one here when yeah. I was thinking about what are you looking for in a typical cornerback. At Chris Voltman asks, is it more important to be an excellent man corner since it's somewhat of a skill you have to have to be born with? You pointed that out a right. moment ago. Or is being competent in zones more important since it comes down to a lot of awareness? And I like that word. Yes. Which is harder to teach once you've been drafted? Yeah. No, I, I mean, I, I think the, the, the speed, the explosiveness is the harder thing. You can teach a guy, you know, awareness with good coaching. Not that, it, you know, maybe he doesn't catch up to that guy who does have great awareness in that, that department. But, again, I'm not drafting – a really good zone corner in the first round. I, I, I'm not. You know, I'm, you're going, again, first round is about elite traits, things that these guys do where you go, whoa. You know, he's not perfect, but he's got these one or two things that are really special, and, like, nobody else in the draft can do that. And to me, again, that's where it goes to man-to-man. -to -man. Zone coverage is great. I'm all for zone coverage. The problem is in big plays and big situations – Zone coverage in the NFL just ain't going to get it done against the good offenses and good quarterbacks. We had this discussion yeah. a lot. You play zone every play against Tom Brady and Aaron Rodgers, mm. they're going to get into the right play, and the receivers, as much as they play, are going to find the hole in the zone, and they're going to pick you apart that way. You know, at, when you look at the really good defenses for the most part, when it becomes big-time plays, or like we talked about during the season, it's a third and four, and it's a must-have down. You can't play zone on that. The good quarterbacks, a five-yard completion, they got 75 different ways to get a five-yard completion against zone coverage. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to have some studs that go, no, I'm going to get in this guy's face, and you're going to throw into a really tight, close window, and I might get a hand on it and knock the ball in the air and do those type of things. That, to me, is what we're looking for here when we're ranking corners uh, as far as, as that's concerned. All right, ranking corners of this class. Uh, you already said, uh, I have a question right here, overall thoughts. You already said that you like the class but don't love it yeah. when it comes to corners. So we're going to go from the, from the lower ranking to the top. Right. Top five here for this group. So at number five, who do we have? Well, oh, well, yeah, but are we going five here or six, this one here? This I is... think that we have, I have five listed here. If you would like to oh, add yeah. a six, no, you can no. do so. You're right. You're right. I wasn't sure if we were going to add who just just off the bat. We have six for safeties. We have six for safeties. Yeah. Did I mess up? Maybe maybe I messed up and sent Pete the wrong text message. OK, either way. Let me see your list for five and six. Just so I can know. Hey, we're, we're going real right here. OK, <laughs> on this pulling back the curtain. Yes. No. It, so so the, you're looking you, at the safeties there. Yes. And that number six is a is um, is a is a corner. Right. So that's where we're messed up a little bit. Okay. Okay. Marco Wilson, right? Right? That's, this is live TV right That's here. okay. Here we go. Yeah. So it doesn't matter. Marco Wilson, either way. Let's just hit on him, okay, okay. before we let up the graphic. Yes. He's a guy that deserves at least to be mentioned. He's number three for Florida. He's a really good corner. I mean, smooth, you know, has really good hips, you know, can move in and out of transition really well. Where he's not in the top five for me is just because – there's a little bit of a lack of burst or closing on the ball as compared to maybe the top five guys we're going to talk about here. But Marco Wilson, I'm just glad we get to talk about him a little here because I do think he deserves to be talked about in the conversation, you know, of the top corners in the draft. He, there's no doubt. Borderline first-round talent. At the very least, I look at it and go, there's no way he's on the board past 45. We had six in round one last year. Right, so, so I could see that. I mean, again – Guys that are elite, that can cover true elite athletes man-to-man, -man, they don't grow on trees. Right. That's a special, special group of people. <clears throat> and he is one of those guys that 
was asked to do that in college and did it at a really high level, just not quite to the level of these guys. And what I think Pete got confused with is number five safety is a guy from Florida, too. So maybe that got mm -hmm. confused a little bit. But Marco Wilson, you know, I like a lot about his game. And really, out of these top corners I'm going to talk about, maybe he has the best nickel value, too. Because mm, his changing your direction and flipping hips yeah. is real. And, you know, wait, Kristen, why don't I just stand up right now and explain hips a little bit, just to people a little, all right? I mean, just so she can widen out here, all right? But, like, I'm going to talk a little bit about some guys who just got greasy, really great hips, and they can do this and flip to this, or they can be in this angle, and then it's just really natural that way. We got other guys sometimes who are, you know, it's, it's more like this, and then it's, okay, wait, I got to go this way? Okay, let me do that, and I'm more of a straight liner, right? Where we get to the top corners in this draft, you know, they can be like this, and now somebody cuts this way, and they're in a real good wide base, and they can just open up and continue right. to go, right? So anybody that's wondering what hips are, that's what I'm talking about, and hopefully you're watching on YouTube rather than just going, what the hell is Chris Sims doing <laughs> as I'm listening right now? Um, so if, if he's a good nickel corner, does that mean he can cover the slot? Definitely. No doubt about it. And I think that's really probably, it's you know, huge. he can do both. Yeah. He he's got the size to do both. He does. I just think there's a little lack of top end speed and burst out of his break, maybe compared to some of these other guys we're going to talk about here in a okay. second, that just makes him number six and on the edge of a first round talent for, for my money, at least. Getting us to number five, we go to the Pac-12 from Stanford. Paulson Adebo. Paulson Adebo was a really fun watch, okay? He didn't play last year. So that's the great thing about this year's draft, too. It's like, wait, no, oh, this guy didn't play? Let me go back to 2019 and watch it. It's kind of annoying, which, is I, which I talked about a little bit. But I think the first thing I'm going to say about Adebo that is real, like maybe has the best ability to – get out of trans and when I say transition, being in a back pedal, being a okay, I'm 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 in a sprint and being able to stick his foot in the ground like we see great wide receivers do and have no wasted steps. Stick the foot in the ground, the guy runs a 15 yard out route and he can just boom put it in the ground and really accelerate to the football. Okay? That's where he is really special. I mean and might be He's on par with really the top two or three guys in the draft as far as that's concerned. I would now, think he'd be higher than fifth because that, that's a pretty important quality. It is, it is a really important quality. Now, he has a little bit of that hip stiffness we talked mm. that we just talked about. He is a hair of a straight liner. Now, what I do like about this guy is if you decide to play him at free safety or something like that at some point in his career, he can do it's that. Awesome. To me, out of all the good corners here now, this guy is a kamikaze missile. Mm. He will hit you. He comes downhill at a million miles per hour. And again, I'm not all about like tackling for corners where it's an essential thing, but there's a physicality element to his game, especially in like the short passing game, you know, screens, halfback tosses, where he's going to have real value as far as that's concerned. Isn't that even more important now with all the catch quick release out, out, out to a Tyree kill or somebody where these guys have to tackle more than maybe. There's no see. doubt. You're, you're not going to get away with just being a pure cover guy all the time this day, you know, 2021 NFL. There's no doubt. There's real value. And there's some teams that are going to value that right. more than others. Like, you know, the Pittsburgh Steelers, they're probably a team that's going to go, you know, we, yeah, we're the Steelers. We, tackling is important for us at corner. We do all these zone blitzes and things like this. So we leave guys in areas where, like, you got to make the tackle. We can't have some cover corner where it's like, oh, I don't really want to tackle him. Oh, he ran through my arm tackle, right? They don't want that. But that's where I think, you know, it is really good. His ability to accelerate his no wasted foot movement in and out of breaks and things like that is really, really special. And it's elite. I mean, it, it, it really is. And then, you know, his ab ability to close is real good as well. Now, yeah, like I talked about, if he has to flip his hips and do things like that, it's not as smooth as some of the other guys we're going to get to, you know, here in a second. And really, when I broke him down, you talk about the hips a little bit being tight and, you know, maybe a hair too aggressive. When mm. you really watch him on film, the only time he gets beat was with double moves. But that's because he's so good at getting out of breaks and stuff. He's going to drive on the ball and make a play on it. So he is amazing at closing the gap between those receivers. They make an out route. He's in the back pedal, and he can come downhill. And like the really good corners in this draft, too, this is the other thing that he does really well. 
He can play off or man-to-man -man bump. Like, he can play off and be very effective that way where, okay, he's in a backpedal, he's backpedaling, the guy runs a curl route, and boom, he can close on it in a hurry. He's really good at that. Of course, he can bump and turn and go because of his good straight speed, but there is a little bit of a – there's where there's a little bit of a wasted step because of, like I say, mm -hmm. the hips being a hair more of a straight liner. Again, I'm being picky. These are top athletes of the world. It's still really damn good, but I'm a big fan of Paulson Adebo, Adebo. I hope I'm saying that correctly. Uh, he's a baller, and he was fun to watch. Do, do you think it's a team-by-team -team value of how much they think it's important to be, to be able to do the off and the bump? I think that – Or is that universal, like, we got to have that no matter what the team is? No, I, I don't think it's – I think it's just it's, – it's, it's a plus. Not all great man-to-man -man corners are good playing off coverage. They're not. You know, you, you could look at almost like – Marcus Peters likes to play off. He likes to, okay, you're coming at me. I got greasy hips and good feet. I don't care. I'll be able to match it and do those type of things, right? Where then there's like Marlon Humphrey where he might not be quite as good at that. So he gets in your face and he's going to go, no, I'm going to make you earn every yard of this. I like to just get there and, you know, have, I have a, a little bit more of a pure sh straight line speed to where guys like Marcus Peters who their speed's good but it's not wow – they can protect themselves by being off a little bit too. So I don't know if teams necessarily value it any more or less. It's kind of more just like icing on the cake if they can do both, I guess is what I would say. Getting us to number four from Central Florida, Aaron Robinson. Yeah, Aaron Robinson, like, is like, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's an intriguing film, okay? He would be the guy I'm talking about where he was put in some positions where I go, I don't, care who you are I don't know how you're going to succeed here what kind of positions well just being in the nickel covering the slot with no help mm. at any time just like hey it's you against this guy and you're not going to have a safety that's going to help you on the inside or a safety that's going to help you on the outside and we're going to run pick plays underneath and we expect you to cover them and it's just like you know yeah there's going to be some plays there where guys are going to get catches it's mm -hmm. just too hard but like the pure ability, again, is amazing. He's one of those guys where I look at some plays and go, yeah, that guy caught it, okay? That guy caught it. He got beat off the line of scrimmage, but holy cow, did he close the gap after he got beat. And that quarterback was lucky to get that completion in there. Mm. You know, he's a little bit of a raw specimen as far as when it comes to technique. He's just kind of doing it with pure ability. And when you get to see him play outside corner, you go, watch out. This is a bad mamma jamma. I mean, he is. First off, he does like to tackle too, all right? Uh, that, but, but I think he's a real island cornerback. And when you see him get to play outside and use the boundary to his advantage a little bit, man, he's got great jam and physicality at the line of scrimmage. And then I think his speed is really what jumps out to me. You know, I think he's probably a high 4-3 guy, like mm. NFL Combine for high 4-3. We might see 4-2 at a pro day, wow. something like that. It's that type of speed. And, of course, has length at 6'1", 193. So he should be an outside corner. He's got the ability to play inside corner. I think it was one of those things where UCF said, this is a tough position. You're the best player in our defense. So we're going to let luck. you do it, and good luck. <laughs> exactly yeah. right. So there's going to be some underwhelming plays, but you've got you to look past that. It's like A.J. Terrell last year. A.J. Terrell from Clemson, yep. my number two DB in the draft. People were going, well, did you see Jamar Chase catch those balls in the national <laughs> champion? And I said, yeah, I also saw A.J. Terrell in his hip pocket. Now, yeah, he caught it. Joe Burrow made great throws. Jamar Chase is amazing. But he didn't outclass A.J. Terrell. If we're talking this is the number one best receiver in college football, this guy was right by him. So let's not forget that aspect. And I think sometimes that gets lost in translation, too, where they go, he let up a catch and did this. Right. And I'm going, the guy's a freak of nature, and he was all over him. Yeah. I, I think it probably helped you a lot to watch Terrell go up against somebody like Jamar Chase. Really gave you real conviction to how much you liked him because he's up against a potential future top five kind of pick. There's no doubt. But you have Aaron Robinson now, Central Florida. I, I, mean, I hear you. Maybe he didn't go against someone even that right. close to good. So – 
How do you get the conviction on this guy when he might not have gone up against a high pick the entire season? No, I, I hear you. There, there's, there's, you know, I, I try to look for teams with speed at receiver. Like, so I go to the Houston game. Houston's got some guys at receiver. We talked about one of them on the, on the last podcast. Um, I'm blanking on his name. P, what's that damn Houston receiver, number five? Uh, he, can, he can fly. Um, it, it's killing me with, with his name. He can fly. Okay. Marquez Stevenson, thank you, Pete, right? I look for that kind of stuff to go, wait, wait. I know this guy can fly. Like, he's got legit kind of like Ted Ginn type speed. Mm -hmm. Let me see what he looks like when he's matched up against him. And he's not outclassed at all. And there was a few other guys in that game, too, that I go, this guy can run. Whoa. You know, because I'm watching them next to Marquez Stevenson going, hey, they're both running go routes, and they're at the same level. And I see too many plays, too, again, where he's in the slot, the guy's running a crossing route. And, yeah, he's getting beat by a yard or two, but now the ball's in the air, and he's all over it. Or he does get picked a little bit, and the guy catches it, but gets zero yards after that. He closed on him when the ball was in the air, so he caught it, and he thinks they're thinking, whoa, we got a pick play, and he's going to run up the sidelines. Yeah. No, you got a three-yard gain because this guy's all over it. Sounds like you're describing a first-round talents Definitely. at corner. Teens or 20s, the more likely I home. think probably more like, yeah, Late teens to the twenties, that okay. that area, that kind of range. But you know, I mean, he, you know, he really, he remember, you remember, like, he's a bigger Janoris Jenkins. Okay, that's what I would say. That's what it, some of the movement. You remember Al Harris for the oh, the yeah. Green Bay yeah. Packers? Yeah, I saw a lot of that. And maybe it's the hair. He's got this long <laughs> hair that also looks like that. Um, but again, I think he's a guy that was a little bit played out of position because he was doing a solid for the defense. And I think the, the talent is real. And I just want to make sure I hit everything because he's a twitchy as hell. You know, he's playing the toughest position on their defense. And, you know, he's great at the line of scrimmage, like I talked about, not only just with jamming, but even mirroring guys. Like when guys are making all these moves, he cuts them off at every which way. And that is impressive too. And like I said, there's – if somebody coaches him a little bit and gives him a little more technique – you know, this is a guy I go and go, watch out. He's a legit NFL island corner and be able to match up with anybody. Not exactly a household name, so it's good to get to know him that way with all that detail. The player we have at three or the player you have at three certainly is a household name from Alabama. Patrick Sertan, the second or Sertain. You definitely hear them both. Yeah. Saw him yesterday, uh, depending on when you're listening to it. That was Tuesday at the Alabama Pro Day. He ran, again, Pro Day times. Uh, he was in, I believe, in the low four fours. Right. Uh, but tell us about why you have him at three. Well, I know that this is going to be the one. This is my Jeffrey Akuda. This is my Jeffrey Akuda. Because it's common to see him at one or two. Right. And lists. I really like the. Again, let's. I'm not trying to say th this kid's a player. I mean, he's a player. I like this kid better than Jeffrey Akuda last year. Just okay. to tell you that, right? Yeah. Okay. So, you know, there there's a lot to love. And and again, you know, look, six two. If you're watching here. 6'2", 208, 39-inch vertical, 131, you know, uh, inch broad jump, 18 reps on 225, and then 442 at 208. Like that's that's real, impressive as hell. That that's list. real deal, yeah. Holyfield. Yeah. I love that. Now again, we're gonna go back to the 442. That's not a 442. You know, at your pro day, that is not a 442. That is a combine 452. It's a 45 for you. That's a 452. Mm -hmm. And you know, the other thing I'll say too here is. You know, there's really not a lot to nitpick about this guy's game. You know, size, you know, really great feet. For his size, he's really good in and out of breaks like we talked about. Can stick his foot in the ground. He's got loose hips. I mean, he's got real great hips that way. But the speed is, to me, a little bit, that's where he's number three for me. Okay. Again, you know, I, we're talking about this guy's a baller. He is. But. You know, if I put him out on the edge against the elite wide receivers in football who can really go, what's, you know, the Tyreeks, the Odells of the world, those kind of guys, I would worry about his ability to be able to jam them, turn, and run with those guys. Okay. That would bother me a little bit. So, again, I, I really like him, but I think that's what just bothers me is just the pure raw explosiveness is not up to par with these next two guys we're going to talk about here in a second. Comparisons are real helpful this time of year, especially yeah. with somebody that was his teammate recently, right. Trevon Diggs yeah. from Alabama, right. pick of the Cowboys. I, right. I forget what round last yeah, year. It was pretty early. I think he's going to go in the second okay, round. Second right? round. But there's a, I know there was a lot of teams that had him as a first-round DB right. for sure. Compare right. those two and what do you see? Yeah, I think that he's a better player than Diggs. 
He is. You know, maybe Diggs had a little bit better of a straight line speed, um, but it's not by much. But I think Sertan, everything he does at the line of scrimmage, again, the ability to flip his hips and do all that, the size, it, it, he's, he's a notch above Trevon Diggs. This, guy's a, this is a top 15 pick for sure. Right. I'm saying that. And there's no doubt. He's that kind of player. So uh, there, there is a difference there. Thinking about 10, thinking about the Cowboys. Yeah. Injun Chow with a good question on Twitter for me. At number 10 overall, should the Cowboys pair Sertan with digs. It makes sense. It does. And it also makes sense within their scheme, right? They play the Seattle scheme. You know, and again, they, they just drafted AJ. Dan Quinn's the D coordinator yeah, of the Cowboys. He just yeah. drafted AJ Terrell. You know, this guy has man to man attributes. I don't think he's as purely physically gifted as AJ Terrell was coming out of Clemson. Again, I'm a guy that maybe overvalues the team that they just go, you take that mofo there. You take him, and then we'll do other stuff over here. And that, to me, also was a little inkling as I look into things. You know, Sertain, they didn't always trust him on the islands against the greatest receivers. Hmm. There wasn't. In Alabama, there's more zone coverage on that defense than I, I expected as I've watched through their film and stuff like that. So I think that's, that is always a little bit of a context clue to me a is little that bit. new this year? It, more zone? I feel like it was a little bit more new this year as compared to other years I've watched. You know, they've had so many good DBs yeah. come out of there and everything like that. Um, but, but again, I mean, he's a specimen. There's no doubt about that. He is going to – the bigger receivers in football, he's going to give them a legit tough time. The T. Higgins of the world and, you know, who else – whatever. You, you guys got my drift. The bigger receivers. Right. He's going to be able to run with them, move with them, and not be out physical by them either. I just worry about the afterburners in football, mm -hmm. the guys who can really go, the Terry McLaurins, those kind of guys, the DK Metcalfs. I don't know if he can run with those guys, and that's what would bother me just a little bit when it comes to him. I think it's important to point out because people are going to see that you have him at three instead of one or two and be like, oh, how can he do that? You just said you think he's a top ten corner. Yeah. So the actual ranking's a little lower than you may see other places, but you believe this is a really, really good player. I think this is a really good player. I mean, and you're getting everything, too. You know, when we had our question about zone, he understands zone. He's a good tackler. You know, there's really not a weakness to his game other than – I just would like to see a little bit more pure speed out of him. At CJ Easter Day, I had your question written down here. I was going to ask it. That the question is, I know how much Chris values speed in corners. So I like a lack it. Way of to deep go, speed. CJ. Worrisome. We just talked about that. It is worrisome. You're the man, you CJ. As your third corner as opposed Thanks to two or one. Thanks for listening. Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> right. I, I value, you know, who, who, who are the, the top corners in football right now? I mean, I think if we really broke it down, a lot of them have legit, legit speed. Yeah. Right? When you the get into that. The point you're getting to is no matter what the name is that yes. someone picks out, you're not concerned about their speed. E exactly. Right? Right. I didn't just, you know, when you think about the real island legit corners, they're 4-3 type guys. Is it more important for a corner than a receiver to have that top end speed? I, yes. You know, the receiver, you can motion him, stack him. You can he set could be, him up. He could be a great setup guy. He knows how to run routes. He knows mm -hmm. how to, you know, break people's ankles yeah. to where that, you know, gets the speed. The corner, though, you can't, you can't be that. Again, you're going to get your ankles broken. So now when that happens, what are you going to do after that? Mm -hmm. And that's where the pure speed comes into question. Right. Like, you're definitely, you're playing corner in the NFL. Somebody's going to break your ankles mm -hmm. every game. It's just now, are you going to get burned for an 80-yard touchdown, or are you just yeah. going to give up a 10-yard completion? Yeah. And that, to me, is, you know, I guess the thing that just is a hair scary about Sertain. It's not easy for either, for either one, but if there's a speed-deficient receiver, I think there's more, more ways for that person to find a way to be successful in the NFL than a speed-deficient corner. I agreed, 100%. I think that puts it in, in perfect you know, perspective. Kind of surprising at number two, I know. which is always fun. I Tyson know. Campbell from Georgia. Yeah. What's up there? Well, I mean, Tyson Campbell was the guy I turned on, and, you know, he's my Deami Brown from the receivers or whatever, but he's the guy I turned on. I just went, why is nobody talking about this guy? I mean, I, I don't understand it. What jumped out? I mean, first off, you know, all the things we talked about being well-schooled like Sertain, right? Sertain's great in and out of transition, stopping all those things, great hips, all that. He's got all of that stuff. But I think he's actually better at, like, sticking his foot in the ground 
and wasting less steps than, than Sertain. But the bottom, he is better at that. I don't think. He's better than that. And then the pure speed is there, too. You know, there's just, they play him in, you got that guy mm -hmm. a whole lot and more. And they're playing against the same dudes. They're playing against the same dudes. There's no doubt. In fact, I'd say he's playing against worse dudes because he's got to play Alabama. Certain right. doesn't have to play Alabama. <laughs> right. You know? And, hey, listen, that's another context clue of that game. Right? How was it? But to me, there's nobody that covered Devontae Smith better than him through the year. There's nobody. He was not outclassed by Devontae Smith. He was not outclassed by Waddle. Waddle has a long touchdown pass because they hit feet and he falls mm. down. And Waddle ends up with like an 80-yard touchdown pass on a switch release and two-man where him and the guy they were switching it with, they weren't on the same page. So I don't know who messed it up either way. He went inside at first and then kind of catches back up to Waddle. Yeah. And then as he's catching up and looking up, they hit heels and he goes down. But, I mean, to me, this is the guy I look for. This is, now, this is the guy I want. This is a true shutdown elite corner, you know, with, with really, again, I was really impressed with the tackling. I was expecting when I first saw him, 6'2", 185, okay, he moves good. But then I watched a few plays and went, man, look at this guy coming downhill, tackling people aggressively, doing all that. But I, I just think all the things we talked about as far as, you know, like a Debo, we talked about with Stanford, the ability to put his foot in the ground and drive on the ball. Mm -hmm. This guy is just as good as a Debo, except he's bigger and – He's got better hips than Adebo as far as that's concerned. I mean, it's pretty, like, flawless. And, again, you're going to see plays against Florida where they catch the ball for a touchdown, you know. But he's in their hip pocket. They can't separate one inch. Now, these are great receivers who were, of course, seeing the ball the whole time, and they adjust and make a thing happen. But, I, again, those are positives to me, going like, wait, this is an elite guy that everybody's looking at. Hey, there's the tight end that everybody thinks is a top five pick. He can't get three inches of space from Tyson Campbell. Here's another receiver that's really damn good. Okay, touchdown. But, I mean, he was covered like a blanket. So back up to that because yeah. you already mentioned that he did well against Devontae Smith. Right. Covering Kyle Pitts is a completely different thing. And he has the physical ability to do that too. That's where I liked it. it shows when pretty went. good range. Exactly. You know, his length. For, for a guy that's a little more maybe slender than Sertain and all of that, you know, the game wasn't any less physical to him. And, again, the context clues of what I said, they, they, they showed more confidence in putting him in an island than Alabama did putting Sertain in an island. And I'm, I'm big into that. I'm sorry. I just, did, that's he the guard, way I am. did he guard Pitts most of the game? He didn't guard Pitts most of the game. He, he stays outside against the guy. Who's yeah. the guy? I got him. Oh, he's over here. Okay. I mean, and they play some zone, too. I don't want to say it's like every play. But you could tell there was a concerted effort to go like, oh, no, we're playing man this play. You, you got to take the best guy. Who is that best guy? Okay, you got him. Mm -hmm. Right. There, there is that. You know, I mean, just, again, I just was, uh, he, he was my love affair of this draft. The technique is really good. They put him on an island a lot. You know, he's a better raw athlete than Sertain. The way they play him tells him a lot. The Alabama guys certainly did not outclass him or any of the other guys. You know, and I thought he has really good ball skills, too. That's the other thing that I thought. I mean, Sertain did, too. I don't want to overlook any of that. Sure. But I was really impressed with, like, you know, even the completions. Like, he sees the ball. He's trying to make a play on it at the last second, but it, it, he doesn't do it. Okay? But there's a lot of other plays where – you know, he's running up the sideline. He's all over the guy. He knocks the ball down. Right. You know, and that's where I was really impressed with uh, Tyson Cable. I, I mean, to me, I mean, yes. I mean, as you know, just like, you know, last year, to me, this is – he's got a little of that E.J. Henderson, except I think the game's even better than E.J. Henderson. C.J.? C.J., excuse yeah. me. Uh, as far as just the polish, the aggression – the got a little bit of the the mojo of like hey i'm the man wow. come and come so, and do it i was going to ask you because i know you, you liked aj terrell a lot we talked about him a couple of minutes ago as your number two corner last year yeah if you liked him better than last year's number two but you you like him even better than last year's number one i i think i yeah i do wow. i think i do yeah you know henderson was a little bit of a projection a little yeah because there was some Man, I wish he would show just a little bit more energy or life to a degree. But you saw too many plays where you just went, man, that's amazing coverage. Or look at that movement. That's special. Mm -hmm. This guy has no letdown. There, there's never, like, anything that I ever looked at and went, oh, I wish he just was, you know. The ability to turn and run was legit. I mean, his hips were legit. You know, 
uh, it, I wrote even early on, I was just like, whoa, this kid in and out of transition is impressive. Like, can really stick his foot in the ground. I wrote, you know, can put his foot in the ground and drive on the ball as good as anybody in the draft, better than Sertain, maybe yeah. up there with the number one guy yeah. we're going to talk about. We, yeah. Yeah. So I'm a, I'm a big fan, as you can tell. And to me, he was kind of the, the surprise guy, the secondary. Great detail there. An awesome setup to number one. Because Ooh. if I can back up a little bit, your number, thir your number three corner, you think, is a legit top 10 pick. Yeah. So that's really good. Yeah, top 15 you, for sure. Your right. number two corner, okay, top 15. Yeah. Your number two corner, you would have had number one. In last year's class, uh -huh. it had six go in the first round. Yeah. So Caleb Farley from Virginia Tech must be awfully good if you have him as your best one. He's a star. I, I don't know if I've ever really evaluated a corner like this. Wow. Like, now you want to talk about corners that should be drafted in the top three? Yeah. Caleb Farley is worthy of being drafted in the top three. And didn't even play last year. Didn't play. I know. I mean, so, I mean, that stinks. That might be the only negative we talk about. I, I'm just... I've never seen a guy with that size move the way he does. Let's start at the top. Then. Number one reason you're so high on Well, Because I've never seen a guy with his size be able to move, cut, accelerate, you know, greasy hips, all of that. I've, I've never seen a guy. I mean, to me, it, it's like the film is better than Jalen Ramsey coming out a few years ago. And you know I love me yeah. some Jalen Ramsey. Yeah. I mean, I love Jalen Ramsey. I got a man crush on him. So <laughs> – that's what I wrote. I mean, I wrote, you know, and, and two, you know, it's another thing that I, I never hit with Campbell. Like, he, he can play off, too, because of that ability to kind of backpedal and put his foot in the ground and drive on the ball. But, you know, this kid I wrote, here, here's just the synopsis that he can play, he can jam or play off. He's surprisingly good in off co coverage. He doesn't understand leverage or, you know, where his help is. But it doesn't matter. He gets it done with just pure raw ability. And then, you know, the talent is the real deal. I wrote, I don't remember a cornerback this big that can move like him. And I wrote Jalen Ramsey, question mark, question mark. And then the ability, you know, again, in transition. And when I say transition for all those there out listening, I'm just talking about, you know, backpedal or, hey, you're running up the sideline with some guy. Now he puts the brakes on and his ability to, you know, slow down, put his foot in the ground and then reaccelerate. That's what I mean by in and out of transition. That's what he does. I mean, that's it's special for somebody that big. You know, he tackles. He has it all and will be more dangerous in the NFL when he learns how to use his long arms and man press coverage. And then I wrote, his stop, start, restart ability, it's off the charts. It's off the charts. And his ball skills mm. are off the charts. I mean, so when I look at all of that, I just go, now, we, we wasted a lot of time on Akuda last year, and everybody telling me a top five pick. This kid is a top five pick. So if, if the Jaguars go Trevor Lawrence, yeah. if the Jets keep that pick and go with your guy from BYU, Zach Wilson, right. should the Dolphins take him at three? No, because they have a zillion dollars into their corners and Xavier Howard and Byron Jones, and they drafted a first-round corner last year. So hold on. Let me just pull up the NFL draft order. So it's and see, this is, this is what can play into this right here this year. It's just the, the again, with all of this stuff, you, you, it, it's about some of these other positions yeah. and what's going to be there or the teams themselves about what they need. You know, so... You know, the Jets, the Jets have a real need at corner. They have a real need at corner. They could live with Sam Darnold. They could live with Sam Darnold. And if they wanted to take Caleb Farley at number two, I would have no problem with that. I think a lot all. of people in this building might have a problem with yeah, that. They would. You're right. And, then, you know, if I'm telling you, I'm saying, no, Jets, take Zach Wilson, okay? Yeah. You know, the Falcons, would they go to another corner after taking one of the top 20 last year? I don't know. They might value him. This kid's good enough to make you think, hey, damn it. Let's get two baller corners on rookie contracts, and now we can do a lot of different stuff on the defensive side of the ball. If, if he's there at four. And Bengals, not... Eagles, Bengals, Eagles, Panthers all need those guys. Yeah. And that's where I start to go into the, the, the corner conversation, along with your Cowboys to go along with yeah. it too. If, if he's there at four for Atlanta and they decide that they're not going quarterback there, would you like to see him be paired up with Terrell? I, I think there's some real value to that. I do. To have, you know, 
Have two of those guys? It's it's. I know. It's pretty nice. You know, you look at a lot of the good defenses though. They do got two. Yeah. You know, there 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 is something there. I mean, we just talked about Baltimore. They got two of those guys. You know, the Patriots have two of those guys. Um, there's a few others that I'm going to blank out of here right now as far as the the pressure is concerned. But no, I mean. I, I, I wouldn't be opposed to that at all. I really wouldn't. Let's back up to the actual skills yeah. you saw on tape. So Tyson Campbell, you complimented him for being able to, to match up with Devontae Smith and also to do well against the Florida tight end Kyle Pitts. Yeah. Did you see Farley going big receiver, slot receiver, physical tight end? It, he's on the outside mostly, but it, it, Virginia Tech is cool and a little bit like with Tyson Campbell too, where it's like, They'll play man, and then they'll go, wait, we're going to do something different over here. You're, you're good. You got him, mm-hmm. and now we're going to do something else. Um, or they just played a ton of man-to-man. So I didn't get to see him in the slot a lot. There was a few different times, and he kind of played off and, you know, kind of played it that way. There's a, there's a clip against Miami where he's playing off. The guy runs like he's playing off. And, again, the technique is not always there, so he's just kind of like – basketball defensive position and the guy runs inside and he goes a little and then he co- comes back on the outside on a post corner and he gets beat but again it's not something I looked at to go like oh man that's that's trouble there mm-hmm. you know it, it, this is another guy where what's scary is how freaky good he is and I think he's still really raw like he's he's got he gets coached a little bit and you go Whoa, this could be scary. If he understands where the safety is, he won't jump inside here right. to like cut this guy off. You don't need to. There's a safety there. Don't do that. Once somebody starts to put those thoughts in his brain, he'll be he'll be a shut down like legit legit corner. And you know, you talked about the the, the Falcons at four. Yeah. Maybe they will be in for a cornerback. I mean, they got Dean Pease. He's that Baltimore New England. Yeah. You know, the Tennessee Titans who just accumulated all those corners those years. They might be into that move with Caleb Barley. I don't think it's crazy. I'm trying to remember in South Bend two years ago because Virginia Tech came yeah. to town. Yeah. Was he against Claypool? He, he got he got to play Claypool a number of snaps. I went back and watched it yeah. actually. You know because it's of course that was the last year he played. How'd it look? I mean, he's right there with him. Yeah. Side, str- stride for stride. There's 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 no outclassing him. There's nobody gonna outclass this guy. This guy is a special special talent. The only negative is, is he didn't play football last year. I don't know the human being. I hope he worked and did all those things. But, again, like I said, I've never seen somebody 6'2", 207, who could be that good in hips, can plant his foot in the ground and accelerate, and then can just can fly. Yeah. Sorry, for lack of a better phrase. He can fly. He can close ground, or he can get on top of the receiver and just be like – How many rockets? He's got three. There's three, three up his ass. Yeah. There, I think with him, him – Tyson Campbell, you know, Wilson, uh, no, or Robinson, excuse me, the UCF guy. Correct, which you had at number, or who you had four, at number four. Yeah. Four. They have three rockets up their ass. They have three rockets up. Now, I, mean, I, think, I think Caleb Farley and Tyson Campbell, it might be a hair more than, than Robinson, but yeah. still, that, they have a little bit of a different top-end speed to me than Sertain, um, Adebo, and Marco Wilson, who we started with. Pete, let's go ahead and recap it with a list of his top corners. And, Chris, just what I like here as, as your partner, you didn't couch it at all. It's one thing to say, hey, Farley's number one. You said that you love him as much as any corner you've seen recently, yeah. that he's yeah. Jalen Ramsey, uh, Ramsey type. Right. So, ballsy job of putting it out there, not only as your number one guy, but taking it beyond that with how much you like it. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. We'll see. I mean, uh, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm done with like, oh, let me, you know, what are people saying? And what's all that? That's again where I'm with Tyson. People like to do that, though. Even the people I know. who are really good at this like to say, but just I know. to kind of leave themselves just in case the kid can't play. I got you. So um, Tyson I, I, Campbell's the one I'm also, you know, I'm, I'm putting myself out there with that one. For I sure. respect that you're not that you're not doing that. Thanks. So thanks. Safeties. Dude. Yeah. Top five safety prospects I think we're going to take a peek at what you had last year okay I know you love this group from this year but last year Antoine Winfield I guess that was a, a pretty good job he was he played just a, a little role there oh for just the Buccaneers. a little role yeah. I think he proved he was the top Second safety round in the pick, draft yeah, yeah. I, I I think that that was proven really for 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 my money there same, same question I asked you about corners yeah kind of zooming out here before yeah. we get into the weeds what did you learn from judging this group last year to, to how it can apply to doing 
a, a nice job again well, this year. Well, I want guys that can, like, you know, Xavier McKinney got hurt. He didn't really get to play a whole lot. So there's hard there. Julian Blackman, he started for the Colts. You know, he was their free safety. Everything that I saw on film is what I saw with the Colts. I mean, incredible range for a smaller guy or a skinnier guy, you know, just had no care for his body. Duggar was a little bit of a projection from the small school and everything like that. And he's a little bit of a specialized type safety. Um, but I think what I look, and Ashton Davis, I, I like too. I mean, again, he was, he was good in coverage. I probably messed up and should have had a guy like Jeremy Chin there or something like that. Nice year. Right? Yeah. But so, to me here too, I, I'm evaluating these guys on, on safety. And, and listen, some of these guys are playing nickel on their college team. You know, and it's, it's hard. But again, I think they're playing nickel because they're going, wait, this guy's so good. Let's put him by the line of scrimmage. Let's not have him dropping back in the middle of the field 20 yards every play. Let's get him down here. He's too fast. He's too aggressive of a tackler. You know, who cares if he might not have the perfect greasy hips to cover guys? He's going to make so many other plays in, any, in so many other ways. So I'm looking for safeties first off that are, that are all purpose. I look for the traditional safety first thing. You know, a guy, free safety, strong safety. Can he fly down? and make tackles? Does he have some coverage ability? And I want to see no hesitation in your game. You're going to play safety in the NFL. You have to be a crazy mofo. Mm. You have to have no abandon, for, like no regard for your body. Like you, you, you can't. If you want to be good, in my opinion, and that's what the good ones are in the NFL. So I look for that type of guy. And to me, you know, it, between the aggressiveness and speed, that's where I look to be, you know, the top safeties in the draft. Different kind of uh, skills you're looking for, but just as a class, I get the feeling that you like the safety group as a whole better than the corners. Yeah, I do. I, I think as a whole, you know, you just I, – I came away thinking there was 10, 11, 12 safeties where I just went, man, they're really good, and they could all be starting for an NFL team next year. That was, that was one thing I took away from this. Going to Gainesville to start, just yeah. like we did with the corners. Oh, so the at, SEC with the streaky players, players shocker, on there? What? shocker, right? Putting yourself out on a limb again. Number five, Sean Davis, Florida. Yeah, Sean, I mean, he is your traditional safety. Free safety, strong safety, you know, has a little bit. I mean, he's balled up, little muscle, like, right? And br brings it. I mean, brings it. That's, that's the first thing I talk about, you know. And I think when I, you know, the big thing with safeties. I don't necessarily value the top end speed. I like top end speed, but to me, it's a position too where you know acceleration may be more important in a lot of ways than the top end speed. You know, unless you're going to ask that guy to play free safety a lot and he needs to have incredible range and things like that. But to me, I think the thing that jumps out with him more than anything is he can cover. He can. He's a good free safety. You know, hips are good. They're not great, but I think where his real value is is. Whether he's a free safety or you got him a strong safety and he's playing cover three and he's seven yards, eight yards off the line of scrimmage, he's in a violent hitter. He's a violent tackler. I mean, he diagnoses run plays and he's down there in the B gap right as the tailback's there or maybe before. And I think that's the thing I liked about him, you know, more than anything. He's more the traditional way that way. He may not be like the pure, you know, top end superstar athlete that some of these other guys we're going to talk about. But still, I think this is a guy that is probably going to probably would run a 4-5 at the combine, something like that. And, it's plenty. And exactly. Yeah. And, and really, more importantly, I bet you his first 10 would be really good okay. to where you'd go, okay, man, he can come downhill or you're playing safety, right, and the tight end runs the 10-yard out route. Okay, he can just go, go to the target. Let me break up the ball or let me, as soon as he catches this, I'm going to knock his hip into tomorrow and crush his hip and do all that. That's where I liked him. I mean, he really is. He's, you know, again, I don't want to, has a build or a style to me that was a mm. little like Bob Sanders. You mm. remember Bob Sanders? He's not oh, Bob yeah. Sanders. I'm yeah. not going to say he's that guy because Bob was a freak, mm -hmm. but has a style about him that way or even maybe like a, a more compact Rayshon Jenkins, who just got a big money contract with the Jacksonville Jaguars. Um, but, yeah, I, I, I really like this kid. I don't know if he goes in the first round. I was going to say, yeah. I think he's a top yeah. 45, top 50 pick probably okay. overall. You, you let me know when we cross into the category of we're now talking about first-round picks. Okay? Yeah. Not yeah. quite there yet. Number four, TCU. This is going to be the only name we get from TCU, which is kind of surprising in the yeah. safety group. And it's not the name a lot of people 
would expect more on that in a bit. But at four, our Darius Washington yep. TCU. And let me get to his page here because um, I'm blown away by this guy. I know everybody, you know, talked about He's the other the safety. Other safety at I that know. School. This is the safety at that school. Just to clarify that right now. I mean, I, I, I watched him and thought, honey badger. That's really what I thought of. You know, again, like, will knock your head off. I don't care. He's 5'8", 178, 180 pounds, somewhere around there. And people might go, well, that's, that's small or whatever. You know, again, honey badger was 5'8", 185 coming out. It, don't, don't put these guys into some bigger hmm. pedestal than you think because you've seen them on NFL Sundays and big games and all of that. No, these guys are about explosion. They're balled up muscles, and they're not giant guys because they got to run down freaky receivers and running backs and do all those things, fill the hole. But, like, I just came away with the guy, um, first off, as pure range as a free safety is concerned, might have the best out of any. There's probably the best. Mm. I mean, he's got hips. An ability to do that kind of stuff of like a real like corner. Was he mostly like the center fielder and a cover one or, or playing half? They played kind of did a little bit of both. He, I mean, it was always safety. You didn't really get to see him at nickel and do things like that. They play a ton of quarters coverage too, which you know in quarters coverage like allows guys the safeties to fly downhill in the run game a little bit too and have that flexibility, and that's where he's amazing. So I mean, range was awesome. Hips are awesome. He is m probably the best open field ta – uh, no, I don't want to say the best open field tackler. He's a really good – there's a better open field tackler, okay? He, his, his, um, his tackling, what I love about it, where he's awesome is, again, he shoots his gun. So he sees the wide receiver screen or a toss sweep. There's not like a – oh, let me stay here behind, you know, 10 yards downfield, and if he gets to me, I'll make the tackle. He goes, oh, screw you, I'm going, I'm going to tackle the guy before he gets to the line of scrimmage. We're loss of one. There was a corner or two that you said maybe a little too aggressive. Yeah. Did he get in trouble for being too aggressive? He, he didn't, did not get in trouble being too aggressive. Not that I saw. Now, you know, unless there was a clip that I missed, but damn, he was a guy that I watched a lot because I just, again, was like, whoa, this guy is amazing, and – you know, let me, uh, you know, clarify what I'm seeing here. This is, I'm, I'm really impressed. Um, you know, can be a phenomenal free safety. What I talked about with his hips and speed, you know, he could be a real nickel corner. This is why I say honey badger. He could be a nickel corner, too, and match up against shifty wide receivers in the slot. So that's where I like him, too. It's that versati versatility. But his ability to, like, break on the ball and accelerate – it, it's up there with the top two corners in the draft. I mean, it, that's where it's special to me. Um, so, you know, I wrote down Honey Badger. If anybody remembers LaMarcus Joyner from if, like yeah. about seven, eight years ago Undersized coming out of Florida State, State yeah. right? He was a second-round pick. You know, to me, this guy is those guys, maybe a hair smaller, but he's faster than both of them. I would think this guy is like 4-4 four, four speed, low 4-4 four, four speed at the combine, but the acceleration is through the roof good. Yeah. yeah. So you have a physical, undersized, versatile corner, can do it all. Sounds a little bit like Winfield last year. Yes. Bucks He's not got him in the quite as round. rocked up like that. He's not quite as rocked up. He's a little bit more of a, a, a thinner frame. Okay. Right? But the same aggressive nature that I liked. And, again, I'm into no hesitation. I mean, if you're playing safety, you got to be willing yep. to tackle and do those things. And here's another thing I like about the guy. He doesn't give a shit if he gets run over. He doesn't care. And to me, that's big. You're playing safety. You can't have pride here. You have to save the play. That's mm -hmm. why you're a safety. So if the guy's got to run you over, then so what? You know, he's going to trip on you when he runs over you, too, and he right. goes down. And that's where I, I like that aspect if, of his game, too. If you're ever on a field at field level at an NFL game, the collisions that make you say, wow, yes. this is more violent than I thought, almost always involve safeties. No doubt. They're the – they're the To support your uh, – kind of how you're describing how they have to be. How you they have, have to, be to have that, that element. The, 
those are the craziest guys I was ever on a team with. Mm -hmm. those, you know, those are pound for pound the toughest guys on the football team, maybe other than the running back. You know, linebackers, of course, are on that discussion, but they're much, much bigger men. Safeties are like, you know, Brian Dawkins, who I played with. You know, John Lynch, who I was with one year. You know, in their brains, they're like, I'm 6'5", 275. <laughs> And you're like, no, you're not. You're 6'1", 210, and you're a psycho. Yeah. And that, there has to be some Bob sort Sanders of that element. Bob Sanders was that way. Bob Sanders was that way. Sometimes that's why it's shorter careers for these exactly. guys. Because they just hit themselves out. But to play that position, I do think you have to be that. He's a legit free safety, a phenomenal nickel corner flexibility to go along with it. And like I said, I thought his ability to accelerate, his aggression were, were elite that way. Third ranked safety in this class. And again, let me know if we're into the first round category yet. And then Javon one's, Holland, yeah. Oregon. Yeah, and I'll say just with our Darius Washington, just to yeah. wrap it up, I don't know if the size is, are people going to be scared of the 178 time frame, size frame, and all that? To me, he's a borderline first round pick. I mean, again, if you, you know, I know. Uh, you know, Honey Badger, he had the issues, so that's not a good example where people were a little scared of him. I can't even remember where he got drafted now that I think about it. I can't even remember where Honey Badger got drafted. But I would think Ardarius Washington is, again, another guy I would say no way I would, he would fall over under the top 45 picks. Honey and Badger was third round. He was third round yeah. because of the off-the-field stuff, right, and all yeah. that. So, yeah, I mean, I, I would be cool seeing this guy anywhere from 25 to 40. Mm -hmm. I think he could be in that range. I, I think he's a really and special football player. I think, it, I think at this position, as much as any position, and the Buccaneers and their GM, Jason Light, right. highlighted this with their postseason run. They had, playing on their rookie contracts, their entire starting defensive backfield, second, third, and fourth round picks. They didn't have a single first rounder, and those guys all played really well. That was right. the strength of that group. So right. I bring up the, is he a first rounder? Because it's yeah. one conversation. I hear but you. Teams are looking for starters. Uh, rounds two, three, four, five. No at doubt. That group. I bet you Tampa had Antoine Winfield in the first round, and that's why they guess in the second round they're like, hey, hey we yeah. had this guy as a top 22 pick or right. whatever else like but that. But there's so many good ones. There is so many good ones. You're right, and I don't know if that's going to help or hurt this. And again, it's all about what's there to be had at certain other positions, and you know, okay, wait, we have this type of safety already, so we don't need that guy or whatever. The one last thing I'll say with our Darius Washington, mm -hmm. if there was one negative, because I don't think I hit on any okay. negative. He can be over-aggressive in his open field tackling of, like, now he's a middle field safety, and he flies down so aggressively that he almost gets down too far to where now there's a, there's a running back with a big hole, right? And he gets down there so aggressively, he lets himself get so close so now the guy makes a move and he would like dig himself into the ground and then have to dive at his feet and do that, right? Instead of like, just like in that situation, hey, there's a situation where the guy hasn't got the hole and he goes like a rocket and that's where he's special. But in that situation now where the guy's through the hole and you're coming downhill, like stop a few yards shorter. Mm. So you just, and just sit there and wait. Play safe. And then play it safe. And yeah. then just go make the tackle because your acceleration is off the charts good. Right. You know, that would be the only negative I found really on his film altogether. Yeah. yeah. And since we're hitting baseball season, it sounds like, you, like a, a batter you would tell, you don't have to hit a home run. Hitting a single. No, works exactly. Well you don't too. have to have a just highlight tackle here. Exactly right. right. Just get him down here. Right. Okay. So now for number three, yeah. Javon Holland from Oregon. Yeah. Javon Holland from Oregon is a guy that. It plays nickel. It, it plays nickel the whole game. All right? He's one of those guys where I'm talking about where I don't think I, – I think they know he's not a true corner. I just think they go, he's too damn good. It's like Buda Baker at Washington a few years ago, who's going to be somewhat of my comparison here to where they're just like, oh, well, you gotta, he's awesome at tackling and creating havoc, and he's too athletic. So let's put him here closer to the ball a little bit and make those kind of plays. And that's where Holland is, like, really damn good. 6'1", 196, so the size is real. He's got some square shoulders on him. Is a big-time punt returner, mm. all right? So that says something about yeah. the athlete. Hey, you're at Oregon, and they put you back to punt return? You okay. can probably run then. Yeah. I mean, Oregon's always got a little speed on their team. So I like that aspect about him. And then he's got, you know, legit physicality. Again, this is a guy I look at can be a free safety can be the strong safety in the box, 
if you wanted to put them at nickel to be a big nickel and, hey, this team runs the ball a lot and they got a bigger slot kind of guy, he can do it. He's got tightness in the hips. He's not going to be great at, you know, opening and flipping his hips and doing all that stuff. He's a little bit of that straight line guy we talk about. No, it's going to be a little bit more like, oh, I got to turn and run. And he's going to be like, and then he's going to turn and run and take off that way, right? That's just to give an example of that. But, you know, the way he sets the edge in the run game takes on lead blockers mm. or just diagnoses the play and it's coming at him and he just goes, I know there's a guy to come and block me, but I'm just going to turn on the afterburners and run right by him and go blow the running back up in the backfield. You know, that's to me where I came away. Like, he has legit downhill speed and legit physicality in his run game to me to where that's where, you know, you, you got to look at the player and go, okay, yeah, he plays nickel for Oregon. He's not a nickel corner. That's not what he is. You can get away with him there a little bit, but I think ultimately you want him to be playing those safety positions. Sounds like a team is going to need to have a specific plan for him. Like Compare him to like at corner, everybody needs a Tyson Campbell or Caleb Farley. He yeah, can play sure, that position well. Sure. Do you think he is for everybody? I, I do think he is for everybody. I'm, I'm into, with my safeties, trying more times than not to find guys that are for I, – I want guys that are there for everybody. I'm looking at it through the traditional lens. You know, it's probably why – last year I put Kyler Duggar there because I thought it was a limited safety group. I didn't love that, oh, he's a specialist, we're going to bring him in to cover tight ends, right, and do that type of stuff. That's also where, you know, Jeremy Chin is a little different. Jeremy Chin basically played linebacker last year for the Carolina Panthers. Right. He didn't really play safety. So that to me is a different guy a little bit. Yeah, this is – I think really all the guys I have in the top five – or I look at first to go, they're traditional safeties. So anybody who needs a safety, no matter their scheme, could live with Can live with, live with this with guy, guys. no doubt about it. I mean, this, this is, you know, you could say he's Buda Baker at the line of scrimmage. I could also sit here and go, he's Jimmy Ward, the first-round pick yeah. for the 49ers yeah. a few years ago. Again, the same kind of thing, though. Free safety. Oh, we'll put him at nickel here because he helps with the run game and he can do all that type of stuff. That's, to me, the kind of player he is, except he's faster and bigger than Jimmy Ward was coming out. You know, the way he runs reminded me of Devin McCourty, mm. and that's when he plays free safety a little bit, and you get to see the traditional safety looks where I go, yeah, it's, it's damn good. Devin McCourty got moved from corner as a first-round corner because his hips weren't great. He was a little bit of like, oh, no, I need to turn and run, and then I go. That's what I do. And that's where Javon Holland is the same way. And at free safety, you can get away with being like that. You know, again, yeah, I'd love to have a free safety that's real loose and can turn his flips that way and everything like that, but it's not as imperative at the cornerback position. Free safety, strong safety, nickel versatility, and um, he's a hitter. And like I said, the biggest weakness is the hips, and there's some wasted steps because he's kind of a bigger square guy up top to where, yeah, he's not perfect in and out of breaks and breaking on the ball and things like that. There is some wasted movement there, and that's why I ultimately come back and go, no, I know he was a nickel in college. This guy is a safety in the NFL. We stay in the Pac-12, and it's good you brought up uh, Buda Baker because we're going to get a comparison here in a moment. But Elijah Molden from UW at number two for your safeties. Man, man, just another, like, I think Holland's a first-round safety, just so we say that, okay. okay, to get that out there. Yeah. This kid is definitely a first-round safety. All right, the, the first guy I'm going to say, does anybody pay attention to the Pro Bowl? And it might have even been all pro this year. I know it was the Chris Sims all pro team. This guy's Jesse Bates. Jesse Bates for the Cincinnati Bengals who came from Wake Forest a few years ago. That's who he is. All right? And again, here's another guy that plays nickel. Mm. All right? It's, it's a nickel guy, but I think a lot because of the same reasons we just said with Holland. They just go... Yeah. He's too damn good to have him 25 yards playing free safety all the time. And I have a question here. Yeah. Why is he not listed as a corner? I, I, because this will go back to the hips and the tightness thing that way. You know, unlike some of the corners we talked about and all that, again, they could be in these positions and do all this. This guy at times is like, is like he's playing and the guy's coming at him and there's no turning the hip. It's kind of just like, oh, 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 wait, he's going to go that way? Oh, no, he went that way, right? And that's, to me, not a nickel, legit cover corner, right? That, that's not what that is. So that, that's where I say he's not a corner. And he's put at those position at the Washington defense, not because of his, pure, his coverage ability is good. Mm -hmm. It's not great. 
I think it's his tackling ability and his ability to create havoc is why he's there. You know, and that's where he was unbelievable. Again, he's the best. He probably is the best open field tackler in the whole draft. I mean, as far as the DBs are concerned, he is amazing. I mean, because he does. He breaks down and he waits for you to commit. And then you go this way, he just goes, boom, I can accelerate and I'll tackle you. You're not going by me. And then, of course, he has the, the physicality and the kamikaze style that I talked about with Holland or Darius Washington or even – you know, the Florida kid, where if he sees a hole or anything, he's going. He's, gonna, he's got no regard for his body, and he's going to take you out. And that's where I was really blown away by this guy. I mean, the acceleration that he has is, is up there with, like, the top corners or anybody in the draft with his ability to just go, come downhill, or if he does break on a ball, like, he can close the gap in a hurry. Eli Miller asks, who was the better prospect coming out of college Buda Baker or Elijah Molden? <sighs> Buda was a hair bigger, but I think this kid is, this kid excites me more than Buda. Wow, because you liked him too. I like Buda, there's yeah. no doubt. I mean, I really did. And Buda, sometimes they got inside the box a little bit more to blitz through A gaps and B gaps and do that. You know, so I, I guess there's, Maybe a hair more of a size physicality element to Buddha. And this kid, I want to say there's more of a pure speed and acceleration element that's better than Buddha had. Okay. But still, you know, Buddha still could accelerate pretty good. And this kid still can take on blocks pretty good and be physical that way too. Uh, I think this kid actually excites me more than Buddha. I do. And I'm, that's saying something because I think Buddha's a, a baller. Think he goes in the teens? It, again, you know, hopefully we can talk about this like three, four weeks from now when I can get edge guys under control and how many good ones are there and mm -hmm. tackles and some of the other positions. But when I really look at it, I mean, I, I think that the guy is – he's a top he's 25 good. pick for me okay. for sure. I mean, that's the one thing I wrote. I just, I just don't know how, you know, that's possible when you really look at him. You know, Again, I wrote the acceleration is the best of all the safeties. I wrote, I think he's, at, at the worst, his speed is low four fours, maybe high four threes. Um, you know, let me just see, it's just some, uh, uh, you know, I wrote a honey badger thing, and then I came to the Jesse Bats. You know, I said he has plenty of raw ability to be a nickel cornerback, you know, but the hips are the question. But everything else is wow, all right? And he's a ball hawk who's physical in all areas of the game, twitchy as hell. The side-to-side -side movements are really good just as far as like, oh, I got to go this way. Oh, wait, let me get over here to avoid the blocker and still get to the open field tackle. That was all real, real, like, unreal. I mean, it really was. I mean, he was, to me, was one of my favorite watches in the whole draft. It's, it sounds like, I mean, just sitting here kind of taking notes, I'm looking at someone who could be described as the number one safety, low four fours. Best acceleration of all the safeties, yeah. best open field tackler of all the DBs. So I, I say all that, yeah, because number one must be must be pretty damn good. Andre uh, yeah. Cisco from Syracuse. My, Cisco to me is, I mean, so you're right. The way I talked about Molden is special. Yeah, and you're right. I, I love me some Molden, <laughs> but Cisco. First off, Cisco's faster right. straight away. I'm gonna say he's faster. I'm gonna say he's got better hips as a free safety and doing that type of stuff as well. Now, he doesn't play that nickel position. This, again, it's a traditional. It's a free safety, strong safety type of stuff. But Cisco is six foot 209, 210. To me, this is more like Jamal Adams-ish, mm. right? Maybe not quite as big as Jamal, but I think he beats Jamal in a race all day long. You know, so that's where I look at it. Do you it. trust him doing as many things? I, I, yes, I think he can do just as many things as Jamal can. He's, this guy, to me, is a really, really special talent. And, I, and, and I, I, I wrote, I mean, I think looking on film, this guy's a 4-3 speed type of guy. I mean, it, it's that well, kind of speed. For safety, that's it's, big time. It's big, and, and 209 or 210 mm. and whatever that is. You know, and also, you know, again, like some of the range stuff is really special. I mean, I can't even remember what game it was, if it was – Oh, man, it might have been the North Carolina game. He's getting an interception. I'm blanking. I got so many damn games in my head. But, you know, he's kind of, you know, backpedal. Okay, he's turning to his left and kind of in a side run. 
and now the quarterback flips over to the other side and he can flip his hips and now he turns it on and goes and picks the ball off on like a post route or something like that. That to me was really, really special. His range as a free safety, I think, was the best out of anybody. You know, and that's saying something at his size too. Because, you know, his hips were every bit as good as the kid from TCU, or Darius Washington, but that guy's way smaller. And mm. I would say this guy's got – he's faster. Mm. His speed is, is better. And then you talk about, you know, again, I'm into the physicality, the no hesitation, anything like that. He's a killer. He's an absolute killer, this kid. Now, it can be maybe his one issue at times. He can be a hair over aggressive that way, but not in a bad way to me at all. The ball skills. The ball skills are really damn good. They are. Now, there's a few plays on film where he gets beat in coverage and stuff, right? But he's like playing 10 yards off, 15 yards off against a good slot receiver or a good receiver. And it's like, I just want to go, well, I don't, I don't know what you ex- Nobody's going to succeed in that position. Right. You're going to ask a guy to just sit here 10, 15 yards off and let a receiver just run full speed right at him, and he can go either way, like one false move and you're done. And to me, that's, you know, again, people are going to look at that and go, whoa, you got to be like that. And I go, and I just go, everybody's going to get beat like that. Everybody. I, the greatest corners in the world are going to get beat like that. So don't go too crazy in docking them points because they called a crazy, stupid defense and are expecting way too much out of a human being to make it happen. I'm just thinking about Syracuse yeah. and the ACC and who they might have played this year. Did they play against Carolina? I think you mentioned that. Yeah, well, they, he's, he, he, uh, yes, he did play against Carolina. He okay. only played a few games this year because he tore his ACL, right, Pete? I'm going to make sure about that. He, so he only played a few games. So he got to go back to last year, too. I think he was only three games so he, this year, if I remember correctly. Tore his ACL in 19? You no, know, in 20. In this, 20. This year he did. Yeah, so okay. that, could, that could be a, a factor. There's no doubt about it to see where I it think goes. Big time, yeah. Yes. Um, ACL, early in the season, I would think he's getting close to being able to be a special, special specimen here again soon. Yeah. You know, yeah, this is, it's going to be a little bit of like, hey, we got to trust in our film and we got to have them in for a workout to see the knee and see if yeah. it's okay and all of that. But like ACLs at that age and, and the year 2021, again, it, it's a nine month injury. I'm not sitting here going, oh man, he's ruined. It's not going to be the same guy. So let uh, Pete's tell me he, yeah. he had that injury in October. October. Okay. So okay. let's say, let's say you're the GM of the team, late teens, early 20s. Nobody's taking a safety yet. Right. You love Elijah Molden. I do. You also like Cisco a lot, but he's coming off that ACL. Yeah, I'm taking Cisco. You're taking Cisco. I'm taking anyway. Cisco. To me, he just fits the NFL game more. You know, Molden, I do. Uh, uh, I have a little bit of a size question, right? Just a little bit. This is a guy where I go, oh, no, his size is going to allow him to play, I think, for a number of years. And then also, I think he could be a true, like, Cam Chancellor, Jamal Adams in the box. Derwin James type mm. safety, but you could also put him back at free safety and go his range and the way he's back there is as good as anybody in the NFL at free safety too. That's where yeah. I really was was blown away by the guy altogether. You know, I wrote you know you know I, I wrote Jamal Adams when I first turned it on. I went like, ooh, this guy's just a bigger version of Antoine Winfield from what I saw last year. That's what I really saw, except he had better coverage skills. Yeah, and. Uh, I, I loved him. To me, he's a big-time NFL safety. He has the look. He's got great legs, and he is rocked up, Paul. I mean, rocked up. Yeah. Like you see the great safeties. They're, they, you know, they're usually kind of physical specimens because they got to be able to tense that body yeah. up and hit a running back who's 225, and they're running both running four forward. He's got to take him down. He's rocked up that and way. The and I got to throw in there yeah. since you put it out there earlier. Yeah. And he runs a four three. I think he does. I know. I mean, that's what he looked like on that's film. That's what too. it looked like. And there was on film in the games you see and things like that, you know, really it was Diami Brown was the only guy I came across where I just went, with pure speed, this is the only guy that's, that's faster than this guy out here on the field. So, uh, yeah, I love him. I really do. And I, I, I think he's made for the NFL. Hey, bottom line, if your team needs a safety and they're willing to take a, or use a pick, Rounds one, two, or three. You've got some pretty good ones here. Yeah. Uh, Sims 2021 draft safety rankings. That was the prospect rundown presented by Applebee's. Applebee's. What up, Applebee's? There it is. 
feeling good in the there neighborhood. A couple of times. So I want to get to a couple of the names. We, we might have mentioned them a little bit, but there are some names that people might have expected to be on your list for sure. corner safeties that did not show up. Right. So at corner, no J.C. Horn from South Carolina in your top five. No. No Asante Samuel Jr. from Florida State. No. You know, you know, and again, I like these guys. I do. Um, I think what it, you know, you know, first let's hit on Asante Samuel. Asante Samuel, there's a lot to like. You know, I just think at the end of the day, the biggest thing is I don't trust the raw speed and ability to accelerate and break on the ball as compared to some of the other guys. You know, it's good technique. He's good in those areas, but it's not great. And even in the way they play him and the way he plays, he knows he's not great in that area. You know, they, oh, it's a fast receiver. He's going to play 10 yards off, and he's going to worry about you're not going to beat me deep. You know, but awesome in zone, really understands the big picture of the game, what the offense is trying to do. And, I, and again, I like the player. I just don't know if that's a player that I look at to go, oh, that's like a first round or a top five corner in the draft. Can have a real successful career. I don't doubt that. But I think those were kind of my, my biggest issues with him okay. you know, more than anything. A couple of the homey questions on corners at Geno at Namath. Thoughts on which corners would be the best fit? The, well, hold on. I, I'm sorry to interrupt. Who was the other guy you asked me about there? Oh, J.C. Horn. Horn. Sorry. I'm sorry, Paul. I know. Yeah. I'm, I'm all over the place. Sorry. <laughs> I got 90 notes. You got a lot of notes there, man. So, Lots. You know, um, J.C. Horn, he's the poster child of looks great. Like, oh, man, look at this guy. He's, he's special. He's a walking pass interference in the NFL. Uh oh. Okay, so that's my first thing. And he just lacks that top end movement and pure raw speed again and explosiveness for me to sit there and go, oh no, he's as good as some of the other guys we've talked about. You know, yeah, he'll be great for tight ends and some bigger receivers and give them some issues. But, you know, the top corners in the draft are going to be able to cover those guys and the speed guys. Mm -hmm. And to me, when you go to J.C. Horn, I go, there's no way. He's too lumbering and big, and there's too many wasted steps, you know, and changing direction and things like that for me to sit there and go, he's one of the top five corners in this draft. How about Kerry Vincent Jr. from LSU? I like Kerry Vincent Jr. a lot. He, I really do. He, he's, a, he's a tough one. Here's another guy that you ask, go, oh, could they have put him in any worse positions? Mm. He plays safety slash nickel. I've never seen a team play the safety slash nickel the way they play. What did Delpit do last Which year? Was a, Delpit got hurt before training camp and tore his ACL. So, or maybe Achilles, but I know he had an injury and he didn't play yeah. last year. This kid didn't play. you got to go back to 2019. Um, there's some really bad plays. But, again, I'm going to go back to, like, what I talked about, you know, with some of the other guys. He's put in a spot sometimes – 12 yards off they're like trying to disguise like he's a deep safety but yet they want him to play man-to-man -man on the slot receiver and do that and now the slot receiver is going a million miles per hour at him and can go either direction and do all those things and yeah he can't he 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 gets beat on some plays smaller guy i do love the aggression and let me get to his page just so i can can hit this um Acceleration speed were really good. I think he's a top 50 corner. I said I've never seen a nickel corner have to play man-to-man -man 10 yards off the ball on a consistent basis like mm. he does. Like, but, like, good as a free safety, you know, has good range that way. And he's an aggressive, wants to tackle, tackle you. To me, that, the biggest thing is, you know, I just didn't know where he quite belonged. He, even though he's 5'10", 185, he didn't play as big as some of those other guys. And I just wasn't sure, is he a safety? Is he a real nickel? Either way, I do think he's a top 50 pick in the draft. Uh, and his ability to accelerate, I wrote, is top notch. Like his zero to 60 is two steps. So I love that aspect about him. But yeah, I just didn't think he was quite as good as some of those other guys. To me, he might have been, in the safety conversation, he might have been next. Okay. Right there. He might be that guy that's six, maybe seven, whatever, how you look at it that way. Uh, but, but I did like him a lot. Any other honorable mention corners that you want to talk about before we 
move it along? Um, you know, the corners, no, I think we, we hit on everybody. Okay. There's probably a few that I'm missing off the Let's, top of my head, but we, we got a lot of time to talk about all this. A couple of quick questions about your list. Uh, thoughts on which corners would be the best fit for teams running that Seattle scheme you talk about quite a bit? Well, that's where, like, you know, maybe the J.C. Horn guy, mm. he could really fit that type of scheme. There's no doubt. You know, again, it's going to be that kind of thing where he's going to jam and then get off. And, you know, yeah, he's going to tackle. He's got a physical element to those type of guys. But, like, even we're seeing with the Seattle scheme, the Seattle scheme's breaking down a little bit. Mm. They've realized they can't play the Seattle scheme so much. So they got to get some – that's why they drafted the kid, uh, A.J. Terrell in Atlanta. They just said, we can't play Seattle zone every play. we got to, at some point, start playing man-to-man -man because the good quarterbacks just go, hey, it's single out here, except they're just going to back off every time and worry about the go routes, and we're going to do that. So that has changed a, a little bit that way. But, I mean, Sertain could certainly do that. I mean, all these guys can do it. I think the Seattle scheme is slowly breaking down, though, mm. to get away from a little bit of because the predictability. Because it's too much zone? It's too much. It, it is too much, and it's too predictable that way. At Are You Easy asks, is there a specific corner who is successful through his physicality versus one who is more successful with the speed and the footwork? Well, I, I do think, again, that goes back to the J.C. Horn conversation as far as the physicality is concerned. I think there is that, that factor to him. Um, I'm missing somebody else who I wanted to get into, too, about that. You know. Your top uh, five corners, you had a Debo at five, Robinson four, mm -hmm. Sertan three, and yeah. Campbell two, and Farley one. Right. I mean, Robinson had real good physicality at the line of scrimmage. There's, there's no doubt. He, he could be that type of guy. You know, Sertan can, too. His technique is great. He gets a little scared at times because he, he's a, a little worried about his speed, right? Farley is really the guy there. Farley can, like, embarrass you. He can be like a Jalen Ramsey where he can just go, like, I'm not scared of your speed. Mm. I'm going to put my right hand right in your chest. And then when I get it there, I'm not going to back off. I'm going to try to embarrass you and put you in the sideline. That's to me where, like, Caleb Farley's got that ability you know, Campbell, Campbell doesn't do that quite as much. He's a little bit more of a jam. And then, okay, which way are you going to go? Oh, you're going this way? I'm, my speed's good. I'm going to now smother you, and you're not going to really be able to go by me that way. That's kind of what he does. He gets on top of it that way. But I guess if we have to answer it, you know, that way, I would go with, with, with that aspect. Let's move into safeties yeah. and a couple of names not on your list. A surprise that Trayvon Merrick from TCU, you didn't have him one through five. No, you know, yeah, I mean, I'm, yeah, now I'm sitting here, I'm going, oh, wait, I should have mentioned this guy and this guy. I got, I got so many damn we'll guys. Get, I I a lot of guys, I know. You did your homework. Morig. Morig, the biggest thing, it's all coverage. Mm-hmm. It, he's a corner that doesn't quite have the elite corner skills. And then yet he's playing safety and he doesn't really like to tackle. You know, that to me, there was hesitation in the game. As I told you, I look at these guys first through traditional safety lens. Mm -hmm. I do. How did he get to be ranked number one by so many people? I, I don't know. Why was Akuda just the slam dunk number one last year? Why was Sam Darnold just the, uh, the mm -hmm. number one greatest quarterback we've ever seen? What do you think other people see in him, though, to have him that it's high? It's the measurables. And then it's the stats of, like, PBUs and things like that. And th that's where I go. That, that's what we're getting. We're getting into, oh, he looks the part. Mm -hmm. And this is how we want a really top-end safety to look. Yeah. And wow, look, that was pretty good. He closed on the ball and knocked it down and did those type of things. So it's like, hey, we like that about him. But then I want to go, well, but, but let's go back and watch. There's like a few plays in every game where I go, you know, it just, he avoids the tackle. He comes downhill and, oh, I slipped. And now Think they're Think about all back the ways that we talked about the safety position and what you value. And how I, that, that, I, that, that's the one guy who has to have the acceleration and lack of regard for his body. And if that's something that stands out on film, I would imagine other people are going to see that too. I would, to me, he's a specialty safety. That's, that's where we get into again. It's just like, it's a, hey, he could be the free safety in the back end and do all that, and he's going to be pretty good and this good range and good hips and all of that. But 
okay, there's that. And then what else are we going to do? Okay, yeah, he can match up some, some tight ends because of his size and do all of that. But I'm not feeling comfortable in any way with him having to fill a hole in the run game mm-hmm. or do anything like that. I mean, that, that's what was scary to me that way. You know, there is some cover corner qualities about the guy, except I don't think the speed is of the legit cover corners is which why he got moved to safety. Yeah. You know, and, you know, the physicality thing is a real thing. I said, yeah, you know, he, he'll hit some wide receivers as they come over the middle, but in filling the holes in the run game and stuff of like that, he wants no part of that. You know, I just wrote, he's a bigger corner playing safety who just has maybe a hair more physicality than most corners, but it's not like, oh, wow. Mm-hmm. You know, I didn't think his – he was – I would say Tyson Campbell and Caleb Farley and Sertain are more aggressive, better tacklers than he are, let alone they're better coverage guys. Right. And that, to me, is not the kind of the safety I want. But there is some real coverage value. He's a guy that I wrote at the end. He's probably going to get overdrafted because he's 6'2", 202, and he's good in coverage. You know, to where that there's going to be some teams that like him. But, you know, for me, on, on my safety in the NFL, no. You know, he's a Big 12 safety. He's a flag football safety. Here's, here's the most important question. Yeah. You have two notebooks, and you have a bunch of yellow, loose-leaf, legal pad Oof. paper over there. Who went on – who got in the notebooks, and who's on the – well, the loose paper over there. Yeah, no, there's no – I'd like to tell you Is there's there a like system? a formula here. There's not. It's no. called – like, it's called – I ran out of room on this notebook, right? Yep. So I'm out of paper. Yep, Happens. Then I went – and, you know, it's the pandemic. Like, there's no spiral notebooks in I the know. building. I know. There used to be. So there was a while where – and so I had to go – there was a yellow pad. And I'm like, I hate these yellow pads <laughs> because they just fall off. If they have, like, the littlest thing, right. they rip off. So I went through – you know, a few days of having to write on the yellow papers. And then this week, we got some, a new, there's new spiral the notebooks building. back nice. there. Okay. They're back there, just so you know. Yeah. Yeah. And that's I, where I, I was go like, back okay, and look for I got again. to go back to it again. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, are, are there any other safeties? Well, well, there's like. Pete wants to hear about Paris Ford from Pittsburgh. Paris Ford from Pittsburgh is probably the guy I look at to be next in the safety conversation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Good length, like, at the safety position. You know, he's a six, six foot, um, a, a good tackler, you know, plays physical, got all the skills you want for the safety position, has good acceleration, but it's not like eye popping like some of the other guys we talked about. He does come downhill. You know, I did like that. Um, you know, I think that he's a true free safety, strong safety. He's going to be able to cover tight ends. I just think the other thing I looked at with him was, you know, just not the pure – raw tools that some of the other guys we mentioned that just you go, whoa, who is that vapor trail on the screen right here? <laughs> you know, this kid can run. I think he's a, a second round, a second round type safety who could end up being like, you know, he could be one of these those second and third round guys you talk about in a few years and we go, man, he's been to the Pro Bowl three times in the first five years of his career. It says a lot about this safety class. I, you it, said that right away, how much you like it. That's someone who didn't make your, your top five list. Richie Grant from U, UCF, yeah, number 27. Yeah. He's another guy I look at and just go, same thing. I mean, he reminded me of Eddie Jackson, who's being a paid a thing. ton of money. Yeah. Right? I just don't know if there was any, like, real, real elite trade about him. But there was a lot of good and no negative. And, you know, again, I, I think that's a, these guys I talked about, I think are all like second round picks. How about you know, no later than early third? Efatu Melifonwu from Syracuse. Yeah, he's a tough one. He's a specimen. You, he's not, he, he's too big and lumbering to be a legit cover corner. You know, again, you know, you've been around football enough. How many times do you really, you don't see six, four corners who can cover people? They, if they get matched up against a smaller guy who can really change direction, they can't, change direction, they can't yeah. do it, right. Yeah. You know, and then, okay, so now let me see the rest. Can he play safety? Because he's built like a brick shit house. Maybe he can play safety. Well, no, he doesn't really like to tackle a whole lot. He's not that, like, again, that mentality we've talked about where there's a difference between being corner and a safety. Safeties are psychos. They're psychos. They will fight anybody on the team. They will hit anybody in the open hole. Corners are not psychos. 
corners are a lot more finesse to their there's game. more they're they're cheetahs they yeah. want to go out and then just run fast and cover people and okay i gotta tackle and take this guy down okay i'll do it but mm -hmm. i don't really want to right that's the corner there's a different mentality in those guys so we've done this we've done this a couple of years i think this is the number one podcast for number of notes brought to the table i think you. so too well because i got to the end of that one and three now different I've... vehicles i mean did, <laughs> You've been you've been rummaging through and looking for for your notes. I got to one time. of these years make a transition to the computer. Yeah, I got to go to the computer because first off, I'm Johnny Environment. I mean, and I'm wasting trees by. I'm the same as you though, isn't it? It's hard for me to think about. I mean, I get so much like, when I write it down. I remember it. it. Goes in your brain. I know where it is. I don't right. have to look for it. I don't want to watch film and try when to I be type typed. it in. I yeah. just it, it doesn't thinking work about as well. typing. Yeah. I'm thinking about typing. But it where, would be more efficient. Yeah. It'd be slicker. Yeah. You'd be more with the times. I know. I'm saying that more to myself than to you. Yeah. But it, it, it's a hard transition. No, I know. I, I'd probably need to do it. It's 2021. It's time. Yeah. And, you know, it's a blue notebook, green notebook, yellow papers, computer, <laughs> Polly. Way to drive Good the to show today. You. you the man. Hope everybody enjoyed it. Send out all the questions. I want to keep talking about this. I know there's a few guys I didn't hit that I like. Again, you know, not everybody's a first They're in the notes. or top five guy. They're in there somewhere. But we got them, and I love the questions. There were some great questions today some on the podcast yeah. and guys who Thanks brought up certain things. I appreciate it. Uh, be good. We'll see you Monday. Uh, edge guys coming up on Monday. I'm going to start talking about some of these pass rushers and what they can do. Of course, that's a big position. I'm interested to see the group. I don't really have a feel for it right now. But you the man. Be good. Have a good weekend. Sounds good. Peace. We're out. See ya. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.